Hey guys, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. I am so excited to start this. We do this a couple times a year, only twice. I go live and paint three different ways, the same design, three different ways. And so um, tonight we're going to be painting this umbrella blooms design, which is like an umbrella with some cute little flowers in it. Um, I hadn't even had time to prep my template yet. I just printed it out and got it ready. I had to drop my son off somewhere uh, up at the school tonight for a um, sporting formal and I was rushing to get back. So <laughs> I'm glad I was only five minutes late. It could have been way more. Um, I could have been way more late than that, but I hadn't eaten supper. So I swung through the Col Culver's drive through and ate a cheeseburger in the car on the way home. Cause I was like, ah, I promised him I'd be live at six. So here I am. Welcome guys. Tell me um, where you're watching from. I'm live on um, the Americana Truck Painting Group. I'm live on the Door Hanger Painting Tips Group and on YouTube. So hopefully you found me in one of the places. Um, and I also texted this link out to everybody. So tonight we're going to kick it off by painting this design on a wood round. Um, and we're going to just prep our template first. I did print this template at um, only 91% scale, which allows me to size it down a bit to fit on um, this little wood round from the Dollar Tree. So I do, I'm doing this because instead of doing like one that's laser cut, because I wanted some of you guys to see that it is possible to still learn how to paint even on a budget and be able, I didn't even, not even take that on straight and um, not have to go and buy big expensive things. You can just buy a little round from the Dollar Tree and get started practicing. So let me get my template all taped up, line these up. So this one should come out to be roughly 11 inches once it's all taped together. Hello, Heather. There's everybody from Nebraska. Hey, Kelly. Welcome. Uh, watching from East Texas. Hey, Barbara. Hey, guys. Glad you guys found me, even though I'm over here on YouTube. StreamYard's still not working well with Facebook. I'm, I keep trying it. It's just still not working, so... We're just gonna keep trying it every day until it decides to work. It's not working because my page is a new page, even though I've been on Facebook a hot minute, but um, y'all know I got hacked, so I had to start a new page. Okay, you know what? Because this is a hassle, I'm gonna take this off because <laughs> I know I'm gonna be fiddling with it all night long and it's gonna drive me bananas. So let's just take that off. Hey, Laura and Dalton. Hey guys, are y'all holding that baby? Laura's got a new grandbaby, y'all. Hey, Shannon. Hello, Stephanie and Judy. Watching from Galveston, Texas. Okay, first, before I go taping this on, I probably, I feel like I need to cut some of this off because I don't need all this white space. And I need to be able to visualize where I'm putting it in the middle of this round. And all this is kind of in my way. There we go. Clean all this up. Okay, now we're in business. Looky there how well that fits. So let me first explain how I got this sized down to fit perfectly on this. This is a cheap little round from the Dollar Tree. It's only like an eighth of an inch thick. Um, I measured it and it's about 11 and a half ish inches. Um, and so I pulled up the 12 inch template and I think I did the math of 11 divided by 12 because I knew I didn't want it to go all the way to the edge. I wanted to have like a little bit of room on each side. So I've got about a half inch here and here. Um, so I did 11 divided by 12 and that gave me 91.6. So I printed my template at 91.6% per, 91 scale. And that's what gave me this size that fits on here. So if any of you guys struggle with resizing your templates and making them smaller to fit smaller things, just do that math. Divide the smaller size by the bigger size, and that will reduce your template. So 11 divided by 12. Hey, Amy. Finished your Americana truck just in time. Awesome. So did Deep in Art Creations. Laura, I can only imagine how good that baby smells. I love a good baby smell. <laughs> it makes me sound crazy, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Babies, they have this new baby smell. It's like a new car smell, but it's with babies. And their little heads, I, they just, it's like an intoxicating scent to a woman. We'll just sniff their heads and think, oh, this is going to go away one of these days. And then you're going to smell like sweaty puppy dog <laughs> or sour milk. <laughs> uh, you tried to print it 91, but it printed on six sheets. Uh-oh. Um, well, there's a, usually in your printer, there is a setting you can change. And normally it says like custom 
and then 100%. And so I just set mine to 91. Hello, hello, guys. Welcome. Lots of you guys are just now finding me. Glad you're here. We're starting off with our little Dollar Tree round. I'm taping that on there. That way it doesn't shift around. And I'm going to get my giant piece of graphite paper that's way too big for this project. I didn't grab out a smaller sheet. We'll just tuck the rest of it under the table and pretend like it's not there. We're going to lift this up. Get it up under that paper. And then we're just going to use a little pen here to trace this design on the wood. And then we'll get started painting. Is anybody painting along with me tonight? Whoops, I actually did not follow that line very well. So we do this every um, spring and fall following our workshop to kind of like give you guys another painting lesson. Plus also it gives me an opportunity to talk to you all about the Painters Clubhouse. That is my membership where we teach door hanger painting. But more than that, it is an incredible community of women who encourage one another. We support, inspire and uplift each other. And so if you feel like you've been missing out on having a community of crafters or feeling like you just, you know, don't have anybody to like connect with, you may just find yourself in the perfect place in our Painters Clubhouse. I've been interviewing a different Painters Clubhouse sister every day this week. I've got another one tomorrow. And so if you haven't watched those, go back and watch them. These ladies are telling us their stories and you just might find that you connect with one of these ladies or maybe they live near you. Maybe you've got something in common with one of them. Um, but I've just really and truly enjoyed getting to know them, getting to know their stories, hearing kind of where they came from. And every single one of them is so glad to be a member of the clubhouse. They, they all talk about how it's improved their lives for the better, not just the painting, but also the camaraderie and being a part of the group. And so our Painters Clubhouse is currently open, but we are closing the doors next Friday. So you've only got one more week to join. Now, if you join tonight by 7.45 p.m. Central, that's in an hour and a half. At 7.45, we're going to be sending out an email to everyone who has joined up until that point with a link to a Zoom where you guys can join us in, um, in an after-hours Zoom call that's going to be happening at 8 p.m. Central tonight. So uh, that's in just under two hours, and we're going to be chatting about how to go from like a beginner painter to an advanced painter. And then we'll open the floor for Q and a questions and stuff like that. Um, that probably, you know, Lauren, I didn't even think about it. She said, that's probably why you ended up with six sheets. You probably took an 18 inch template and tried to reduce it instead of a 12 inch template. So if you have an 18 inch template and want to reduce it, you would do 11 divided by 18. But, um, it's easier to take this, you know, to ha not have to reduce it that much so because you're going to have more sheets of paper and that's just unnecessary. So 12 going down to 11 is a lot less far to go. Brandy's hemming some pants. You're doing some sewing. Stacy said, I had to listen to you live tonight. I needed to be among the PC sisters. I don't know what you're going through, Stacy, but we're here for you. Maybe you just needed a little bit of a bright day, bright part in your day. Uh, Sheila says, I joined on Wednesday night and I've had so much fun going through all the great things. How many, who else has joined this week? Raise your hand and let us know if you joined this week. Okay. As you can see, our design is now on our wood piece and we can begin painting. Let me pull up the picture. We're going to paint it like the sample because that's what a beginner would probably do. The only thing we're going to have to figure out is what color to do in the background around our little umbrella. That's right. I couldn't figure out what it was called. So we're going to do nice bright colors with like a yellow on the umbrella, bright pinks, purple, teal, and all of that. I'm thinking maybe like a really soft blue on this outer part. Maybe even this crystal blue color or what's this one? Spa blue might work really well. I feel like that's going to be less harsh. So we might do this. Let's just start with that, shall we? Let me grab my little ice cube tray that I, I probably need to... Um, Clean this thing out. I'm like, do I even? I don't even have enough slots available in this one. <laughs> I may have to grab an egg carton to put paint in tonight. Oh wait, here's my other egg, my other ice cube tray over here, and it's way cleaner than that one is. So we'll just use it. It's got a little crusty paint in that one, but it'll be okay. She was, uh, somebody else raised their hand. You say fa it says Facebook user. Um, if you're watching from the Americana. Uh, truck painting group or from the door hanger painting tips group, you'll need to click that StreamYard link that's up in the video description and click allow so that I can see your, your names. Otherwise you show up like this. 
I don't know who that is. <laughs> and if you can't figure it out, that's okay too. Okay. Um, Mm, one more thing. In Friday Fab Five this morning, I showed you guys our brand new signature paint brushes from Southern Adornments. And it's a set of 12 brushes for $30. They come with this beautiful little canvas bag that you can store them all in. And I thought we would christen them tonight by getting, getting started painting with these. So I'm really excited to use these. Let's just set them off to the side here. We're going to start with probably the second to largest flat tip brush. So this isn't the biggest one. The biggest one's about an inch wide. I feel like that might be a little big. So we're going to go with this one. Get a little bit of water on it. First time I've ever used these. Don't you love brand new paint brushes? Oh, it's just so nice. <laughs> I'm a goofball. Dip in your paint and just start painting around the edge of that umbrella. And somehow I did not paint the little line that connects the umbrella stem to the or I didn't draw it, trace it when I was tracing. So we'll just have to imagine that that's where it goes. The sun is coming in here really harshly. So if those shadows get to be too crazy, I may have to put my blinds down. I don't normally paint this time of day and it is really coming in bright from the West. After it's been cloudy all day, now the sun wants to come out. <laughs> what has everybody got plans for this weekend? Anything fun? If not, if you don't have any plans, you can come back again tomorrow. I'm going to be live in the morning at 9.30 a.m. Um, putting all of our new members' names on a wall, on our member wall. And then at noon, I have another Painters Clubhouse member interview we'll be doing. And then tomorrow night at 7 p.m., I'll be live again painting this design another way. But that time, we'll be doing it on the 18-inch etched door hanger. So a lot of you guys ordered that this morning after Friday Fab Five when you heard that I was going to be painting it live three ways. So we are shipping out several of those. And if you noticed, we got some of those orders out really quick today. Um, my brother was hot on the laser, getting them going, cutting them out and sanding them as fast as he could get the orders out. I even went back there and pitched in on the shipping, helped him get caught up. Sun's making it a little warm in here. I'm going to keep my fan on. Your daughter has prom tomorrow, family reunion. Uh, Brenda says she ordered her brushes after Friday Fab Five this morning. A lot of you ordered the brushes. I think I sent out like 40 something brush sets this, is at, this afternoon. So a lot of you guys ordered them. The great thing about having these brush sets are when you're following me painting live, you're going to know exactly what brush I'm using. There's not going to be any question on like, you know, the shape or the size or any of that, because you'll know that if I'm using these pink handled brushes, that if you have this set, you know exactly which brush to grab. So that'll be nice. <laughs> Amy said I need to get those brushes ordered. I did put the link to them in the video description for y'all, because I thought some of you might not have caught it on Friday Fab Five this morning, and you would um, want to grab them. <laughs> Shannon, you did miss a lot today. It was an hour long Friday Fab Five. I didn't intend on it to go that long, but I was talking about Painters Clubhouse and I kind of got on my little soapbox <laughs> telling people to get off the fence and join. And we'll get to that in a minute. I'm sure I'll get on my soapbox again, but it was all for good reason. Um, because so many people, when they say, the, so many people who are in the clubhouse who have been members for a while always say, I wish I'd joined sooner. And I know there are those of you who are watching who are like, I'm thinking about it. And you just can't decide if you should splurge and spend this money on yourself or you can't decide if it'll be worth it. Or maybe you don't feel like you're a good enough painter, whatever lie you're telling yourself. <laughs> um, there just know that people who have joined always wish they had joined sooner because it has that big of an impact on their lives. But yes, toward the end of Friday Fab Five this morning, I got very emotional. I started crying. It was totally unexpected. It hit me like a ton of bricks and I just lost it. And I was wiping my eyes with like a paint covered baby wipe. It was pitiful. Um, but if you guys go back and watch it, it's like at the last part. It's like the last 15 minutes. But it was truly sincere. I did not expect that to happen. But I'm the kind of person who holds it in probably too long and then it bubbles to the surface and bubbles over. <laughs> Amy's doing some rock painting tomorrow. Barbara's flying to Las Vegas. Uh, Sunday prayer for safe travels. Oh, on Sunday. Gotcha. Have fun. 
Stacy said, adding you to my list for your trip Sunday, Barbara. She's, she's going to say a prayer for you. Lauren says, me, I wish I'd join sooner. Jane says, relaxing and watching Painter's Clubhouse video. Well, welcome, guys. I'm going to shut that window because it's bugging me. Excuse me a moment. Also, these windows need cleaning so badly. It's always when the sun comes shining through that you're like, man, somebody should clean these windows. It ain't going to be me. <laughs> I hate cleaning windows. Oh, that's better. I don't feel blinded from, the, from this side anymore. Okay, we've got our little background painted here on our round. It's probably going to take another coat, um, but man, this little wood round is soaking up the paint so fast. Like, it's already dry down here. Of course, I've got my fan going too, but, um, and I don't think the whole thing needs another coat. I think it's just a few spots where I didn't get good coverage. Now that it's drying, you can kind of tell in a few places. I kind of thought maybe about doing some polka dots or something in the background. I have a hard time not adding patterns to things. So what do y'all think? Should I do that? Maybe add some like soft little polka dots in the background. They don't have to be real bold. They could just be like a really, like a slightly lighter blue than these. What color blue? This is spa blue. Spa blue. It's kind of like that blue haven that we've been using, but it's got a little more turquoise in it. So the Blue Haven that we used for um, the Americana Truck Painting Week is this one. And the Spa Blue is like that, but it's just a hair, tur more turquoise. Polka dot backgrounds. I do too. Let me get this dry and then we'll put some polka dots on it. Is there anybody who's watching who's been thinking about joining the clubhouse? I would love to answer your questions and maybe help you decide if now's the right time for you. Let me know. Donna said, I'm tracing it on my wood round. I ran out to the barn to cut it out in a hot minute. I'm glad you got it done. Mary said, it's the best thing I've done for myself, joining Southern Adornments. Thank you, Mary. She came to our event this past weekend, too. That was fun. Um, it was so good to have you there. Okay. Let me grab my little... Polka daughter. I think I want to do, I'm like, do I want to do the big ones? I like these little sponge pouncers from Martha Stewart. I've had them a long time. I need the lid to an egg carton or, or an ice cube tray here. Something I can put paint on that's flat. Hang on, that's like a paint booger that's going to get stuck in the carpet. Let me put that over here. Gross. Now it's all over my hands. It is a pretty blue, isn't it? All right, so uh, hmm. if I want to do polka dots that are like this, but a tad lighter. Well, I don't know. Hang on. I just remembered our umbrella has polka dots. So that would be a lot of dots going on. I don't know that we want to do that. What if we just add like a slight distressing in the background? That might be smarter because it won't be so busy. It'll be more subtle. But it'll be it won't be plain it won't be like boring <laughs> we'll do it with white okay it'll be like shabby chic okay so to do this i'm just going to lay down a little worm of white paint that's what i like to call it and i've got my little chip brush this is a two inch chip brush i'm just going to dip in it a little bit and then kind of dip it off and then we're just going to start up at the top and go whoop, 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 whoop. you got to make the sound effect or it don't work right <laughs> not nearly as fun with that sound effect. I'm doing this first because it's kind of in the background of our little umbrella. So feel free to go on top of your umbrella when you're doing this and kind of scrape it on from the bottom, but then also off, like start in the middle of the umbrella and scrape it down and away. That way it looks like it's coming behind the umbrella. But I love a little bit on the edges here like this too. And I do kind of like, like to keep it all sort of going the same sort of direction. But that's just my preference. You could have it going willy nilly all over the place if you wanted to. It's just the way I like to do it. And you can add as much or as little as you want. I'm just kind of dancing around now and looking to see if there's a couple of little areas that feel like they need a little bit more. If you feel like you've done too much, it's okay. We're going to paint the umbrella and everything and this is all going to be pushed to the back. Uh, put raindrops since your umbrella has dots. Oh, that's kind of a cute idea. Clouds. 
Uh, Pamela says, I joined a few months after painting Lola. I was on the fence and then I just jumped in. Have not regretted it for a second. It's been my me time. You are worth it. That is really good advice. I think a lot of times people feel really guilty spending money on themselves for something like this. But do you think your husband or your brother or any of the men in your life feel guilty about buying new hunting gear or going golfing or doing any of the things they do? <laughs> Men don't carry guilt quite like women do, I don't think. Uh, my husband actually did feel guilty, though, this weekend because he was wanting to go to North Carolina for a golf tournament with his Marine Corps buddies. And he's like, man, that's a lot of money to fly over there just to go to a golf tournament. I said, it's not just a golf tournament. It's a weekend away with your guy friends that you were in the military with. And you don't get to spend very much time with them. You don't know how many more opportunities you'll have to do something like this. And so I highly encouraged him to go because he has been – by my side every minute during all of these live events that I do. And he does not question it one little second when I go off to go to a beach trip with the creative club girls or go to a mastermind meeting or any of the things that I do. He's like, go, you need this, you know, and he encourages me. So I encouraged him and I said, honey, you need this. You've been working really hard. I paid for the plane ticket and I said, don't worry about it. Our miles will cover it. <laughs> Just go. And so I booked him a plane ticket. I booked him a car, rental car and it's not even costing that much because he's staying on uh, in a guest room at his friend's house. So, I mean, I just had to get him there. <laughs> he is fantastic. Lauren, Gina said, nope, nope, nope. Yep. The men don't worry about that. Okay. We're getting our gray sky color and this is going to be the color of our little umbrella handle. Um, but just like guys do stuff like that for themselves, women need to do stuff for themselves as well. We're always doing for other people. So if it's been a while since you've done something for yourself, join the clubhouse, do this for yourself. You're going to enjoy getting to spend time painting designs that you wouldn't have a chance to paint. Otherwise, all the designs we paint in the clubhouse are exclusive designs. You're going to have more, um, technical instruction than you would have just watching me here on Facebook or on YouTube. Plus you're going to have accountability because when you're watching me here on YouTube, there's nobody holding you accountable being like, so what did you paint? You know, what have you painted lately? And let us see your pictures and stuff like that. And like, there's no personal accountability just watching here on Facebook. So if you want to make painting a regular part of your life, you need to do something about that and actually like make the time join a group that's going to help you be dedicated to doing that. Post your pictures inside the group. Get encouragement and feedback. Okay, I'm going to get a darker gray. And we'll do just a little shading on this umbrella handle. This is zinc. It's a real charcoal gray. And I'm just putting a tiny bit of it on the corner of my brush. And I'm going to look for the handle here. Oh, hang on. I need my little spritzer bottle. It's drying with this fan on already. Where's my paint? There it is. I'm just putting it on the corner of that brush I'm pulling it around and sometimes it's dragging right and sometimes I feel like I'm really having to force it to shade all the way around. If you feel like you struggle with shading we have several videos where we've incorporated this into our paintings and we're actually doing a hang on Charlie I'm talking what baby you gotta use your float we won't jump in it we're just trying to lay down a little yes take good care of it and put it back up when you're done we will can we use dad's too for two yes okay. those crazy girls are out there swimming in the pool <laughs> but as cool as it is now the pool does have a heater so that's part of it but they're crazy. She's got a, a friend over tonight and they're swimming. Um, what was I saying? Oh, we have a technique spotlight this month in actually not this month in the month of May, where we're going to be having a specialized lesson just on shading. So this is kind of like a way for you to learn a special skill without, um, you know, wasting a lot of time because normally, our skills are taught like in door hanger tutorials. So you would have to watch a tutorial and get to the moment where I'm teaching that particular thing. Y'all, she's already off and gone. I know y'all said, <laughs> Amy said hi to her. She was high and by. She, she ran in and ran out. Um, and so this would be something where you could just pull that video up, watch it real quick and implement the technique. <laughs> yeah, car parts. Guys be buying car parts to fix up their, their vehicles. Oh, I like the idea of puff paint, Brandy. I, I, I have um, 
I don't have puff paint, but I do have like the slick paints. You know what I'm talking about? Claire said, I'm on the fence. I did my first painting with you, the truck last night. What has you on the fence? What is your doubt or your hold, your set, your, the thing that's like holding your back? Share that with us if you don't mind. Dixie says, you have to make the time, not find it to be creative. I always enjoy my PC time. Can businesses or pages join? Uh, well, I mean, you can join if you have a business, but to get in the Facebook group, you need to join the Facebook group with your personal profile <clears throat> instead of like your business page. We don't allow pages to like join the Facebook group, but everybody who has a business page does have a personal profile because they won't let you set up a business page on Facebook without a personal profile. Oh, thank you, Brenda. Okay, there's our little, look, oh, it shows up better when I lift it up like that. Looky there. There's our little umbrella handle. Um, the exchange rate. Oh, you must not be in the U.S. Where are you at? Are you in Canada? I know nothing about that, unfortunately. Can't really give advice around that part of it. Okay, I feel like now we need to pick out our other colors because I can't just start painting something yellow or I might be like, ooh, that was the wrong yellow. Um, yep, and you can use your Painters Clubhouse fees as a tax write-off if you're a business. So there are other painting groups that I'm a part of or um, like, for instance, Cindy Manley's, um, I'm a member of her quarterly box subscription. I write that off as a tax write-off because I learned something that helps me in my business when I use it. So you could do the same thing with Painters Clubhouse if you have a business. Um, Gina says, I follow several painters, and while they're all great in their own way, I don't believe anyone else provides as much insight and detail in the teaching as Tamara. Uh, also, Tamara's camera angle and lighting is the best. I'm visually impaired, and the angles are important to me. I'm glad you, um, you said that. Thank you, Gina. Canada. I don't know what that means for the exchange rate. Uh, I, I wish I could help you there. Uh, Dee Dee says, what's the difference in the brushes that came with the Americana truck packages and your new ones? The ones that came in the Americana package are these just generic like blue handled brushes. The types of bristles in these are not all that different from the ones that are in my custom pack. What's different about my signature brushes is that these, every single brush in here was handpicked by me. Uh, I got to pick the sizes. I got to pick how many of them there were. I got to pick the types of brushes that were in this pack because I know exactly what kind of brushes I use when I paint door hangers. And I, I wanted to have like a certain kind or certain sizes of, you know, filbert tip or flat tip and whatnot. Um, and these are just special too because they have the words on them that say, trust the process. It's going to remind you to relax when you're painting. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, these are definitely different because they are curated perfectly to paint on door hangers. Whereas some of the ones that might be in your other ones, they might work okay for door hangers, but you might be missing a couple that you really should be using on door hangers, like larger brushes and things. Okay, let's pick out our colors. So for the pink, let me pull up my picture again. It needs to be a nice, vibrant pink. Of course, I'm going to pick dragon fruit. I like this color. Uh, we need a purple. It's going to need to be a really vibrant purple. This is magenta. I feel like it's not purple, but it also kind of looks like that picture, color in the picture. Now, the teal uh, looks like teal mint. And then the yellow. Does this look too dark for that yellow? Maybe, maybe not. Let me get my little color swatches out. When in doubt, pull them out. Pull out your color swatches. Uh, I have all of my Deco Art Americana colors swatched on here. So, Sunset Gold looks really dark when I look at it on here. I'm kind of like, maybe I want something, especially when I look at it with these colors. I kind of feel like I might want primary or cadmium yellow to keep it brighter and more. Because when it dries, it's going to be more of this like mustardy, orangey color. So I'm glad I did that. Let's pull out cadmium yellow instead. Okay, here's our color palette. Oh, and we need a green. So I think for the green, I'm actually going to go with the new green from DecoArt, which is this leaf. Uh, it's called New Leaf. This is one of their 2024 colors. Um, and then we're going to need a brown. Brown, brown, brown. I think I'll go with a softer brown for this instead of like a dark brown to keep the colors kind of light and fresh. So here is my color palette. Set that up there. What do you guys think? 
like those choices. Dee Dee said, I used to tell paint and brushes are important. Amen to that. Okay. Uh, for the, let's start with the bottom part with our um, umbrella. I'm going to rinse out the flat tip brush that I was using. Which one? The second to largest. It's about a half inch wide. I'm going to use this one. Also, take care of your brushes. Do not leave them in the water overnight. I've been guilty of that in the past. Also, from just like rushing out of here after a Facebook Live and forgetting them. And then I'm kicking myself the next day when I'm like, oh, man, I shouldn't have done that. I'm just going to paint over our umbrella area down here. And then we'll add some polka dots. Look how pretty and bright this color is. If you struggle with staying inside the lines, it's okay. It's just paint. It'll paint over. Just take your time. Um, in the Americana truck painting group the other night, I was talking about this thing like called paint ridge. You know, when you do like a, a swipe of the paintbrush and you get too much paint along the edge and you feel like you've got this weird little ridge of paint that just won't smooth out because you're afraid you're going to push it over onto the next area. To avoid that, you just dab off a little bit of paint from your brush and then go in and slide along the area that you're trying to cover. I got a little bit outside the lines, but it's okay. I really got outside the lines then. Okay, I can't forgive that one. I'm gonna have to clean that up. <laughs> it got messier and my paint water's a little dirty, so I should have probably just gotten a new baby wipe out for this. Yep, I'm making a bigger mess. There we go, before I make it any worse. You like the yellow? I think so too. I think it's really pretty. And then we also talked about getting up in a tight little space. So this is a half inch wide brush. Getting up here in between these little petals might seem like a challenge, but if you put your brush up on its tippy toes, you can kind of like start in the tight spot and then pull the paint down and away into the larger area. So I can do that in between each one of these little petals. Notice how I instinctively just doop, dab that off to kind of get a little excess off so I don't have that paint ridge. And I'm going up on the tippy toes. And as I come down and out, I'm applying some pressure and the brush is kind of flattening out and spreading out to cover a larger area. Okay, let's get up in between these little petals. And leaves. And so I think that's why I like flat tip brushes so much because I can paint, you know, a nice large area by putting them down flat. And then I can also get nice tight little crevices by putting them up on their tippy toes and just guiding the brush down and out. Um, let's see. Judy says, y'all talked me into it. I ordered the brushes and a fall design. Well, good for you, Judy. <laughs> Amy says, I'm in several craft. Oh, okay, this is going to take up most of the screen because Amy, Amy left a big message. Where'd I go? She said, I'm in several crafting membership groups, and if I only had to pick one to be a member of, it would be the clubhouse. Tamara is an amazing teacher, has oodles of projects, tips, I like that word, and really listens to the members for what they like to, would like to see and learn. Also, the guests she brings in are always great and teach other crafts, so you get more than just door hangers. But the thing that really puts PC ahead of others is the community, Tamara and her staff. Thank you, Amy. She is so sweet for saying that. I really do have the best team, the best staff. I've got a lot of like people who are helping me. And a lot of people will say, I don't know how you do it all, Tamara. I don't do it all. That's the secret of it is I have people that I trust that help me with all of this. I mean, you guys have seen this week that Miss Lauren Martin has been showing up with me on all these little Zoom after hours calls. And she's been helping me behind the scenes with all the questions and comments when I'm live in that Americana group. And what you probably haven't seen is that Miss Megan Ramus, our community manager, we call her the camp counselor in the clubhouse, behind the scenes in the clubhouse has been answering so many questions in the Americana Painting Tips group. She's been answering questions. So she hasn't been as visually present or like hearing her voice, but she's been behind the keyboard doing all the things. And then Jennifer and Sarah and Adrienne manage our tech and customer support. And those ladies are constantly answering your questions if you can't find something, helping you get logged in helping you with your orders. Those women are incredible. Um, and there are more that I could mention. I've got somebody who helps me run the whole business. She's the online business manager. Her name is China. 
Um, I've got a design team, Lauren, Sarah, and Marie, and myself who design all the designs. So you can see I do not do all of this by myself. I have an entire team of people. I've got Gretchen who runs the Facebook ads. I'm like, who else am I forgetting? <laughs> There are so many of us um, and it takes a village to run a, a, a door hanger business of this size. So I could not do it all without them. Oh, Jan just joined today. Congratulations. I'm glad to have you as a new PC sister. You can now say hashtag PC sister in the comments. Oodles is a fun word. <laughs> Brandy said, when you go to any of the live events, you get to meet these wonderful women. Yeah, not all of them usually come to the events, but uh, let's see. We've had, last year we had Sarah as running our vendor booth. She's normally a customer service lady and she handles the back end of the Painters Clubhouse membership area, making sure the supply list, the templates, the videos are all organized in there, in there for you. Um, in Dallas, we had several of our uh, clubhouse, um, I mean, our staff members running the vendor booth and all the behind the scenes stuff. And so those ladies definitely make running this business a lot more fun and a lot easier. Okay, we're going to do one more coat on our yellow. I know we can still see those graphite lines through it, and that is perfectly okay, because later, after we get our polka dots and everything, when we're doing our finishing touches, we are going to go in and add some little highlights and lines and things like that that will kind of accent the shape. And so um, I know that will be covered up later. Just keep painting. Trust the process. Don't get hung up on some little detail that you feel like is imperfect right now. Just keep putting paint on the project and moving along. If you get frustrated, take a break. Go, go grab yourself a snack. Maybe you're just hangry. Walk away for a minute. Michael knows if I start getting grouchy, he probably needs to get me a snack. <laughs> One of my favorite stories he loves to tell is when we were on vacation one time, we went to the beach with the kids and on the way back from the beach, I was snapping at everybody. Apparently, I don't even remember what I said or what was being, what was happening, but apparently I was real grouchy and I was like snapping at everybody and he didn't say nothing. He just pulled into the, the closest gas station and went, and went inside and I'm like, what are you doing? Of course, there I am snapping at him. He goes, I want to die at Mountain Dew. And I said, okay. And so he said, do you want anything? I said, no. <laughs> and I just sit there in the car. Well, five minutes later, he comes back out. He hands me, me, a Diet Mountain Dew and a large Snickers. And I was like, I didn't ask for this. And he said, but you need it. And I said, what, 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 what makes you say that? And he said, just, just trust me, just eat it. And so I did. Five minutes later, I was so perky. I was so much happier. And he loves to tell people how, like, he can tell when I need a little bit of food and I start to get real grouchy. <laughs> hey, Joanne, I'm glad you found me. <laughs> yes, Sarah did rock that booth. She was the, the, the keeper at the gate or whatever you call it. Like, she, she had everything under control. Oh, you said that our team helped you find the truck class when you couldn't find anything and your payment didn't go through. I'm glad they were able to work that out for you. Hello, Ann, PC sister. Um, I hope you come back to Texas and can catch up with you at the event. That would be awesome. Um, right now, we don't have any plans to come back to Texas for another event. The next event is happening November 15th and 16th in the Smoky Mountains of Sevierville, Tennessee. Um, and that's November 15th and 16th. We'll be selling tickets to that May 3rd through the 12th. So May 3rd, circle it on your calendar. We've only got like 60 tickets left. We've already sold over 200. I, I do this face because I'm like, we've never had an event that big before. So it does make me a little bit nervous, but I'm like, it's kind of like when they say, you know, going from two kids to three kids is hard, but after you have three, it's like, what's one more? So I'm kind of like, well, going from like a hundred to 150 people might be hard, but then after like 200, what's 300? You know, <laughs> we're not gonna have 300, but you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> being hangry is a real thing. He is a sweetheart. Tammy, oh, uh, yes, Tammy, this this is very similar to that situation. There was one time I was painting live and I was getting real crabby over whatever it was I was painting. Nothing was working out that day and I was just so frustrated. And he walks in and hands me a bag of food from Chick-fil-A and I'm like, what's this for? And he said, I just thought you might be hungry. And I was starving. My painting was taking way too long that day. I was on Facebook Live. The painting was taking way too long. And he just hands me that bag. And I immediately open up that sandwich and start tearing into it on Facebook Live. Very unprofessional, but 
you know, we're, I'm, I'm myself around here. What you see is what you get. So I was eating that sandwich and I mean, I perked right up. That's all it takes is a little bit of food and I feel a lot better. And ever since then, you guys know, if Tamara gets crabby, she just needs to be fed. <laughs> it looks like a bowl of fluffy ice cream. Oh, that, that, that's kind of a fun idea. This could be the spoon dipping in. Stacy said that day was awesome. That's true love right there. That's how well he knows me. Marie, Jane said it was from Nickers Bar, got me through the Marine Corps Marathon. Jane, I did not know you had run the Marine Corps Marathon. You're going to have to tell my husband about this because he has run in the Marine Corps Marathon and he wants to go back and do it again in 2025. Um, and so he would lo he loves talking marathons. If you want to get him excited or talking about something, talk to him about staining wood, woodworking in general, or marathons. And he will be happy as a clam. But yes, he knows me very well and he knows how to how to put a smile on my face, make me feel better. He's my best friend. And I miss him. He's been gone since Thursday morning on this little trip. He'll be back. He'll be back on Sunday. And my oldest son is gone right now, too, because he uh, is in a state competition for school in Louisville um, competing. I was like, what's it in? I don't even remember. It's like machining. Don't forgive me. I don't know the technical things, but it's something to do with like the CAD programs and machining and all of that. And so I'm really proud of him, even though I don't understand a bit of it. I'm having to take my time right here not to get carried away and make, you know what? Oh, wait, this is a purple flower, right? Yes. Okay. So it's okay. I was thinking I should have painted that pink, but that's not right. That one's purple. So this one's pink. He's in your neck of the woods. That's right, Lauren. And you know what? True 17 year old fashion and boy fashion. I've been texting him every day. Hey, honey, I miss you. What'd you do today? And I'm getting like one word responses. <laughs> he's 17 though. So, I mean, he's not like giving me very much details, but I was like, so the competition was today. How'd it go? He goes, good. I said, well, did you win? Uh, I don't know. I said, when will you know? He said, tomorrow, probably. I'm like, come on, give me some more. Give me some details. I said, I want to see a picture of you in your, they had to like wear a special shirt and khaki pants. He never wears khaki pants. I was like, take a picture. And he goes, I can't take my phone with me. I said, well, make sure somebody takes your picture. Quit being difficult. <laughs> uh, I love this color. This is dragon fruit from Deco Art. It is so pretty. I almost painted that pink. Oh, that's supposed to be a leaf. Oh, well, green will paint over it. It's just paint. No worries. Okay. I think it's going to be another coat, but we are making progress. Uh, Jan says, will you be sending info about the Tennessee event just in case we can, can go and start booking our hotel? Uh, yes, there's also a lot of information over on our website. Hold on. Let me put in this web address for you. SouthernAdornmentsLive.com has a lot of information to, on it to include which hotel we're staying at. There's not a special booking link or anything like that. You just call the hotel and say, I'm with Southern Adornments Live. You'll get the room right. Teenage response. Charity does you that way. Come on now. <laughs> Tell her I said do better. <laughs> um. So let's talk about what you get in the Painters Clubhouse. We're going to give you two tutorials every single month, um, at least two tutorials. Uh, some, a lot of months lately, we've been doing three. It just kind of depends on the projects, what we've got lined up. We always have a guest instructor come in and teach. Um, we give you templates to go along with those tutorials. So with those templates, you could use them in a number of different ways. You could transfer them to um, fabric, clothing, canvas, a piece from the Dollar Tree, like I'm doing right now, and you can still paint along with us, even if you don't have the door hanger or you're not ready to start cutting your own door hangers yet. Um, we also do challenges um, where we kind of challenge you to do something that kind of pushes you out of your comfort zone a little bit in regards to painting. We do Zoom paint parties where you can hop on and um, chat with some of your Painters Clubhouse sisters. 
a great opportunity to get to know some of the PC sisters, especially if you're planning on coming to a live event. I mean, it's a really great way to like feel like you make some friends before you even get there. And then once you get there, you feel like, oh, I feel like I've known you forever, you know, and you've really literally just met each other. But more than that, if you're not planning on coming to a live event, maybe you're just, you know, crafting at home all the time by yourself. You need friends to be able to do that with. Um, and so you can join on those little Zoom paint party nights, craft along with some of the other ladies from the clubhouse and feel like you're not so alone doing this. Yeah, tote bags. That's a really good idea. Um, Marie Mosley. I don't know if Marie's watching right now, but Marie just did our Americana truck design on a tote bag. Jane says, I've run and finished it four times, but I won't be running in 2025. I would have to be training since it's fall. Uh, yeah, that was one reason we pushed it off to 25 too, is Michael had not started training this year at all. He um, had like a little bit of knee issues and stuff like that. So we're going to wait till 2025 so he can uh, get back in shape for that and train for it. Marie's tote bag was awesome. Painting that little red truck unleashed something in my soul. Jan, you are not alone, sister. It does that for everybody. That's why we do these workshops and things, because if you sit down and commit to painting one door hanger with me, that's all it's going to take. It's going to unleash something inside of you that says, what else can I paint on? <laughs> Next thing you know, you're painting everything in the house and your husband or whatever is like, what are you doing? Have you lost your mind? But he's also probably secretly really proud of you and, and happy that you have found a new hobby or obsession. <laughs> Anybody else feel that way? Do you feel like something was unlocked when you painted that Americana truck design? I have been seeing all of y'all's pictures in the group and y'all are doing such a good job. It's impressive. Uh, one of my favorite thing about these workshops that we've been doing is that there's always those people who are a little bit like wary and not sure if they're going to be able to make the design turn out quite like they envision it will, you know, they, they doubt their own abilities, but once they follow along with my instructions and they complete a project, they're usually blown away by what they were able to make. And they're like, Ooh, I want to do this again. Cause it really boosts your self-confidence. It makes you feel good. It's addicting in the best way. And it's a healthy addiction. It's painting. Joanne said, I joined the clubhouse about three months ago. It's the best thing I've done for myself. I'm, it feels like you've been here forever, Joanne. It does not feel like it's only been three months. Maybe because you've been watching me for such a long time. So you were one of those people who just watched for a really long time before you finally pulled the trigger and joined. <laughs> I'm sure there are more of you watching right now who've been waiting and waiting and not, and not made the decision. So if you're like Joanne, don't wait any longer. We're closing the doors next Friday gonna be your last chance to join and you um you know after that you'll have to wait until the fall when we open it up again which will probably be late September and so think of all that time between now and then that you could really be honing a new skill enjoying a new hobby making new friends and preparing to come to Southern Adornments Lab with us Jan said, it was my first time painting with you, and I'm excited for more. <laughs> oh, Brandy, you haven't heard me talk about my new puppy yet because he's outside now. <laughs> he got to where he's chewing on everything, and he's gotten big enough that I'm like, you're, you're rowdy. You need to go outside now. We kept him inside just because he was like a new toy we played with, and um, he's outside. He's doing great. Uh, I just took him to the vet the other day for his four-month checkup. He got his shots. He had a perfect bill of health. Um, and so he's doing great. He's, he's chewing up everything he can get his hands on. Michael went and bought him one of those little Kong balls that you can put like peanut butter inside. We hadn't tried that yet, but maybe that'll keep him from chewing on some things. <laughs> Jake Leanne said, coming from a gal who used to do stencils and transfers, I thought the truck has challenged me some. I'm not quite done with mine. And it's definitely not perfect, but I love it. And also the group and the members seem very active. They are. It's a very active group. Let me say this, Leanne. If you started with stencils and transfers, you're starting from a place of where everything is usually very crisp, right? Like stencils usually give you a very crisp look, a very uniform look. Uh, transfers 
you know, you rub them on and they look exactly the way they were on the transfer. So this has a much more like whimsical, less perfection. This type of painting is, is much more like, it, it goes to like whatever style you are. So it may take you a little while, Leanne, to kind of get out of that feeling of feeling like everything's just not quite perfect uh, because you're, you're, you've been conditioned to like expect it to be a certain way because of stencils and transfers. Nothing wrong with stencils and transfers. This is just a completely different kind of craft. Marrow bones from the butcher shop. Okay. I'll have to check about that. All right. Next flower. We're going to have to probably do another coat on that, but I'm going to let it dry some. If you see those on your bottle, pull them off. They're called paint boogers. They will keep your paint from closing up good. And then you'll start to get this like little coagulated stuff inside your bottle, which will come out and cause your bottle to get all clogged up. This is one of my favorite colors. Teal mint. It is so, so pretty. It's like the perfect turquoise green. See how I'm just gliding along the edge of that smooth, that little edge. I just load my brush up, dab a little off, start with the corner of that brush right on the edge. And then I just pull it around and I can like twist it with my fingertips to kind of go around the edge of the flower, twist it again. If you run out of paint, flip the brush over and then just fill in the middles. <laughs> hey, Selena. Is Amanda's kitten getting along well? Amanda came and picked up a kitten from our house. Selena's good friends with uh, Amanda. And that very night, Amanda sent me a video of the kitten, like, laying on her chest and licking her nose. So I'm glad to hear. I still have the little orange ones. If you know anybody else who wants a kitten, I'm trying to find homes for them. Um, so <laughs> I'm about to put them outside because the little orange ones have a lot of energy. They're very energetic they're constant like at night they get the zoomies and it's like jumping all off the furniture and everything it's crazy okay we're gonna fill in this little flower again with the magenta it's funny how this magenta really looks purple next to the dragon fruit pink because i always thought magenta was like a very pink color but this is a very purpley magenta Is teal mint the color of your front door? No, my front door is bluegrass green from Deco Art. Uh, and I didn't actually paint it with Deco Art paints. I took the bottle to uh, Sherwin Williams and they color matched it. Do Deco Art paints come in bigger sizes? Uh, some of them do. So, like the white, the black, red, primary yellow, there's only like maybe 10 colors that come in these eight ounce bottles. Um, and I do buy those um, because they're kind of like, staple colors that I know I'll always be using. So I, and I go through a lot of white, um, a lot of black, a lot of red, light buttermilk. That's another one. I do have one of festive green. I don't use that much. I've got one of deep burgundy. I probably don't need it. I've got primary blue. I don't use very much. And I do have Bahama blue, which I do use pretty frequently and primary yellow, primary yellow and cadmium yellow to me almost feel like the same exact color. There's not much difference. Okay, I'm going to step down to a smaller brush, smaller brush now. You're just now tuning in. I'm using the brushes from our Deco Art Signature Brush Collection. They come in this beautiful little canvas bag that you can store them in. They are just got added to our shop today. They're going fast. We've already sold several. Um, and so if you would like to grab these brushes, I'm planning on using them on all of my lives going forward as often as possible so that you guys will have the exact brush that I'm using whenever you're painting. Uh, and I did put the link in the video description for you guys. Alana says, I've been a fan of yours for several years. I'm always in awe of how fast you can paint, how easy you make it seem. I'm getting better, learning new techniques. Wish I had the money to join every painting club. I understand if you don't, um, and maybe the timing's just not right, but I will say if it is a financial thing for those of you who are thinking about joining and are just like, the state of the economy right now, I just can't. I can barely even buy groceries. Look, I get it. I get it. So what can you do? You can still show up and watch me on Tuesdays when I paint live right here on YouTube 
and maybe on Facebook if I ever get that worked out. Um, you can still take advantage of the freebies that we have on our website in the free library area. And you can still continue to learn to paint even if you can't afford to join the club. Now you will be missing out on um, all the community aspects of the Painters Clubhouse and things like that, but maybe the timing just isn't right for you. But let me say this, if you're gonna continue to go ahead and paint and follow along with me on Tuesdays and things like that, I want you to set a goal for yourself to join us next fall when you do have maybe a little bit of money saved up or something like that. What you could even do is between now and then, make yourself a goal to sell like one door hanger every month between now and September when we open the doors again. And if you find that in September you have successfully sold at least one door hanger every month, then you know that you can afford the, to join the Painters Clubhouse. Because if you sell just one door hanger a month, that's going to offset the cost of $47 a month and you'll be able to join the club knowing that you can always just sell a door hanger to pay for the membership and continue to learn to paint and be a part of the community with no cost to you. Alana says, I'd stick with YouTube since Facebook's getting harder on us creators. I, I definitely am not going anywhere from YouTube. I'm staying on YouTube. Um, I just prefer to be able to be in both places because I know some people just hang out on Facebook all day long and that's it's easier to reach people there that hang out there. Um, but as far as streaming and stuff, I will continue to stream to YouTube and, and all that. So if you prefer to watch me on YouTube, that is not going away. Although all of our Painters Clubhouse stuff does happen in a private Facebook group. And, and I have not found, and correct me if I'm wrong, if y'all know of the source, I have not found any other platform that does groups as well as Facebook does, unfortunately. Michelle said, if I didn't live in New York, I'd definitely give the yellow one a home. Aw. <laughs> Okay, we've got almost all of our base coat colors here. We need to add some more green. I probably need to do another coat on the teal mint. So we're gonna dry this real quick. If it's being afraid that you're not gonna have enough time. So we talked about the being afraid you're not gonna be able to afford it. And that's a real thing. I, I mean, money is tight everywhere right now. Uh, groceries do not, are just getting more and more expensive. Gas is getting more and more expensive. So I understand if you feel like you can't afford it, but definitely make a plan to try to sell at least one door hanger between now and fall uh, every month. And then that would help you know if in the fall you can join because you'll know, okay, I can consistently sell one door hanger a month to be able to afford this. Um, if it's time that you're not sure you'll have, take, take my friend Lauren, for instance. She may still be here in the comments. She has a dedicated space down in the basement of her home where she has all of her paint stuff set up. And some nights she may only go down there for about 20 minutes and do a little bit of painting, but she doesn't confine herself to having to finish one whole project in one sitting. And so she might work on the same door hanger all week long and just go down there for 20 minutes here and 30 minutes there. There's Lauren. Um, she might only go down there for a few minutes here and there and paint and then come back and work on it another night. And so she, fits it in by doing it that way. Um, Alana says, is it easy to sell door hangers? I think it is. Um, the easiest way that I found is starting out was not going and setting up an Etsy page or anything, or even starting a Facebook business page necessarily. The easiest thing you can do right now, the lowest hanging fruit is to take a picture of that Americana truck door hanger that you finished and post it on your Facebook page. And don't say door hanger for sale, X number of dollars. Don't do that. Post a picture. Make sure it's a good picture with good lighting. You know, if you need to, take it outside in indirect light. Lean it up against a tree. Snap a picture. Um, post the picture and in the caption, say something to the effect of, check out this new hobby I've been learning. I'm thinking about selling these. That thinking about is like the key word there because um, it's going to get people to be like, huh, she's thinking about selling that. I really like that. Maybe I'm thinking about buying one. And if they comment underneath there, don't put the price in the comments. Number one, that's against Facebook's terms terms of service. Technically, you're not supposed to sell on your private Facebook page. You're only supposed to sell on business pages. So just say, hey, um, if they say, what's the price? Say, I'll DM you. Send them a private message in a private chat. That way, if you have 10 people DM you and the first person you sell it to for $25, maybe the next 10 people you sell it to for $35 because you're like, oh my, I might not want to make a million of these. I'd rather make 10 for more money than make 30. <laughs> uh, but you can start out that way. And once those people buy one door front hanger from you, 
paint something else when the next season rolls around. Those people, oh goodness, those people will probably come back and buy again. I didn't mean to click on that, Lori. My um, thing has been doing this lately where it wants to flip and It's still doing it, isn't it? Okay, let me try. I don't know what it is, but after I've been on, or it's an hour. At the hour mark, for whatever reason, when I've been on for an hour, it always does this. It like reorients the camera and messes things up. Let me try flipping to the front camera. <laughs> and then flipping back to the back camera and see if that, yep, that reset it. Okay. I need to report that to StreamYard because it happens almost every single time that I'm on here for more than an hour and it's infuriating. I'm sure it's like a bug or something, like a, a weird little thing that happens. <laughs> okay. And then I feel like I can never get my camera angle just right afterwards. Okay. Um, yes, you can buy the blank to this um, Umbrella Blooms door hanger, but it does look like this. So this is what the blank normally looks like. We took the template and put it on a Dollar Tree round. So if you have a round at home, you could also just do that. Kate says, I'm doing personalized little house signs for my first door hangers and I'm waiting for my blanks to come in. That's exciting. Hey, Trisha, welcome. Okay, let's do another coat on our teal mint flower here. And then we'll go on to finishing up some of the other details. One of the other things that I haven't mentioned yet about the clubhouse that's a big benefit, if you're thinking about buying blanks in our shop or buying templates, you have a 20% off discount code as a clubhouse member that you can use as many times as you like throughout the month to buy wood blanks. You can use it on these brushes. Um, you can use it on templates, things like that. You also get 20% off of our Procreate course, our template club. Uh, we have a 50% off coupon code that you get to use on Deco Arts website to buy paint. And so that can be used up to two times a month on Deco Arts site. Where'd it go? I think I dropped it on the floor. Can't hear audio. Anybody else having trouble hearing me? Stacy, try going out and coming back. She can't hear me. <laughs> I just said that. I was like, she can't hear me. This is sable brown. I picked this because I thought it might be a nice, like, subtle brown that wouldn't overpower some of our nice, happy, bright colors. Hey, Gina. Okay, Gina can hear me. Gina's watching on Facebook, though. It was the lady who said that was on YouTube. YouTube, can you still hear me? Alana says, where did you get your ice cube tray with the lid? We sell those on our site as well. They're $7, um, and they come with the little lid and our logo on the top. They can hold up to 14 different paint colors. And if you keep the lid on them, your paint should stay nice and moist for several days, if not weeks, depending on how much paint you have in there and whatnot. And then when you're ready to wash them out, you can just kind of leave the lid off and let them dry overnight. The next day you come back and you just push against the little silicone bottoms of the ice cube tray and the paint just kind of can be peeled right out. It's real satisfying. Okay, Teresa on YouTube hears me. Good. So does Heather. Bonnie, the template club, I can drop the link for you there. Um, that's, that's completely different from, whoops, I did not get that typed in. Um, Template Club's completely different from Painter's Clubhouse as far as it doesn't come with any painting instructions or anything like that. It's literally just a subscription that saves you money on templates. So normally the templates are $7 in our shop, um, but if you join the Template Club, you get all 20 designs that we release every month for just $42. And so to Painter's Clubhouse members can save 20% on top of that price. I'll touch up a couple little spots right there while I'm doing that. Oh, Bonnie said you forgot to get how to get in. Oh, that's a different link. <laughs> Why didn't you say so? To log into Template Club, uh, Painters Clubhouse, anything. Uh, actually, to log into Template Club, you're going to need to go to shopdoorhangers.com. 
I can't give you the link to that. Uh, I can give you the shopdoorhangers.com link. But uh, when you go to that up in the corner, like where you log in, that's where you log in and you go to your previous orders. And you'll grab them there. Hi, Kate. Hi, Kate's little girl. How old is she? Or sorry, you said how old she is. What's her name is what I meant to say. <sighs> Jan says, I love the ice cube tray. I'll have to have it. Jan, if you've just joined the clubhouse, uh, I just shared a new product that we released in the clubhouse this uh, just today or yesterday where it's got a Painter's Clubhouse apron, a Painter's Clubhouse water cup, these brushes, um, an ice cube tray. It's like a starter pack of all the things that you're going to need when you first get started. And so if you're interested in that, there's a link for that over in the clubhouse. And I would recommend you just start with that if you're wanting the brushes and the ice cube tray. Romy. Oh, I love that name. Makes me think of Romy and Michelle in the movie. Kate said, hello. Well, you've gotten a done, lot done already. I started at six, actually. So you might be here. Um, at, you might have thought I started at seven. We started at six. And if you sign up for Painters Clubhouse within the next 30 minutes at 745, we're going to be sending out a link for you guys to um, hop on the Zoom after hours call with me. That's going to be beginning at 8 p.m. That's okay, Bonnie. Uh, and that's in 45 minutes. And so we'll be hopping on Zoom after this is over. So if y'all got questions, if you've got a painting you want to show me or something you're like troubleshooting or you just want to talk to me, you can come on there and we'll bring you up on camera and you can chat with me. Okay, let's finish this up. Let me look at my picture here. So here's our sample. We still have to do polka dots, outlines, and details. So let's do our dots. Let me grab my little sponge pouncer thingies down here. Of a mess. Like, where is that sponge? Some of my sponges have walked off. Charlie. Not saying names, but and my glasses will not stay up. I don't know how many times I've pushed them up my nose tonight. I guess they're getting worn out. All right. So for this, we're doing white polka dots. This might be a bit of a challenge getting up next to these flowers. Probably should, in hindsight, I probably should have done the polka dots first, but it's all right. We'll, we'll be okay. Um, and I think I want to grab some sticky notes because sometimes I use those when I'm getting ready to do polka dots and I don't want to use painter's tape or something. Sticky notes just feel like easier, less messy. <laughs> Emma, you're an honorary member of the Paint Painters Clubhouse. Emma's Lauren's daughter. She and Charlie are good buddies. So I know I'm going to do a polka dot right here, kind of half on and half off. These little sponge bouncers are about, about an inch or so. And we'll do this one right here. Give it a little gentle twist and lift up. Boom. Done. Um, let's do some more. Dab in my paint again. You don't want to leave a lot of paint on your sponge. Just a little. Space it out. Daub. Whoops. I accidentally got some of my flour here. Getting out of baby wipe. We're going to clean it up. I'm going to kind of form it into like a little triangular point here. And just kind of go along the edge of that flower petal to wipe that off. If I need to, I'll touch it up with pink paint later, but I don't know if I'm going to need to. Uh, I'm going to do another one right here, and this is going to form like a triangular pattern between the dots. So if you don't know this little hack, this is kind of like my signature polka dot hack. <laughs> you need to be able to draw like a little triangle between your dots. So for the next one, we're going to create another triangle pattern by putting our dot here. This allows you to keep your polka dots somewhat evenly spaced without having an awkward dot. Put this down. There we go. Another one here. Look how many dots I've done without having to re-dip in the paint. Okay. Um, I kind of want to just be bold and do the dot and then wipe it away with the baby wipe. May or may not be a good decision. So let me be the guinea pig here. <laughs> Let's just try this out. Oh, 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 oh. It's not terrible. <laughs> it's not terrible. 
I was like, is this going to be easier? It might be easier than taping everything off. It's to just add a little more magenta to clean that up or to just scrub it away with a baby wipe. It's coming up. And I'm kind of just wiping it off the petal. That's not bad, actually. Okay, let's do it again. Get some more white paint. We're doing another one right here. This one's only going to kind of go barely up onto that little teal flower because it's kind of behind it. So no sense in doing the entire dot. This is why I said it might be easier <clears throat> if I had thought to do my dots before I painted my flowers. Because then we wouldn't care if the paint got up underneath them. Let's do another one right up in here. I don't know why I did that. I should have just taken my brush and just colored that little area in. That would have been simpler. It's okay though. Y'all learn from my, my, my goof ups. Hang on, we're going to rotate this. Keep folding it over and getting a clean area of the baby wipe. Good as new. It's not perfect. It's not the perfect method. I'm like, okay, if I want one over here, what I also could have done was this. I could have gotten a little bit of white paint. And let's see, if I want it to be kind of behind this, this one, I'm just going to kind of like draw it in. Like it's just peeking out ever so slightly from behind there. Let's make it a little bigger. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. Be bold. You can do it. <laughs> Thank you for your encouragement. And I'm like, do I want one here? I kind of want one here. Let me get my brush again. I'm just envisioning where this would show up. It would kind of peek out from behind this little leaf here. That way, it's the illusion that we have all those polka dots. Also, I don't want to have anybody under the illusion that my polka dots don't have texture. Because anytime you use a sponge pouncer, you are going to have texture. It's just hard to see it on camera right now. And y'all, y'all, sometimes I think you guys think that like my door hangers are so perfect. They are not. They got texture. They got issues. Uh, Jan says, as a club member, can we get access to previous templates? If you're talking about Peter's Clubhouse templates, yes. There are over a hundred different templates and tutorials in our member library that you get instant access to. <laughs> Laura, I have the same problem with my sunglasses that I bought last summer. They are actually glass instead of plastic and they feel heavier on my face. They constantly slide down. Okay. Um, I think I'm ready to start adding some finishing details. So I'm going to do this by taking a little bit of the color that we were using, like this dragon fruit pink. I'm going to put it over here on my little ice cube tray lid and mix a little white into it. making us a lighter shade of that same color. We don't need very much of it, just a tiny bit. And we're going to outline our petals of our flowers with this. So this is a way to kind of gently add some highlights and accents without like overpowering the door hanger. This also allows you to kind of clean up any of your little parts that feel like they um, maybe didn't turn out quite as good as you wanted them to, or if you feel like you've got messy lines, I feel like adding all of this is just kind of like concealer. <laughs> I use a lot of makeup metaphors when I'm painting. It also feels like adding eyeliner to your project. Makes everything kind of come together. <laughs> All right, and then for the teal, we're going to do the same thing. Pick up a little bit of teal, mix it with some white. I already had some white over here on my palette, so I'm just kind of shoo, 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 shoo it together. And then we're just going to outline our little flower. I'm just using the round tip brush from the Southern Dormant Signature Brush Pack. And then we're just going to add some little wavy. Hold on, my paint's drying out. A little wavy line in the middle there for little petals. 
Just a little bit more like that. And then we'll do the same for the magenta. Hey, Carol. <laughs> and her son's tablet. That's okay. Uh, magenta and white. So I'll do that right here. Use up the extra white and stuff that I had on here. To clean the lid of your ice cube tray, uh, you're just going to need like a little plastic scraper or something. Um, so I get, I have one of those that I bought like on Amazon. It's like a plastic scraper instead of like a razor blade. And I just scrape that thing on here to kind of like scrape any excess paint off the, off the lid. I kind of want to continue these on up here. I think they're going to look better that way. And I kind of want to continue the pink ones, so I'm going to redo those. Make them go all the way up to the top of the flower. I like that better, I think. There we go. And then for our sable brown that we did, I'm going to do a tiny bit of black in it to kind of darken it up. Just a teeny drop. See, just a tiny little drop. Pick a little bit of that up. I'm not even using the whole drop. Just picking a little bit more of it up each time. You could also use a darker brown if you like. So I'll get it the darkest, just a little darker here. And I'm just going to, oh, that's not going to be enough. It's not going to show up. So I'm just going to blend that whole black dot in with that sable brown. It's not making the prettiest color of brown, but I think for the purpose of this, it's going to be fine. I'm just kind of outlining the shape of those little things. And then I think I might make a lighter version as well to do a little highlight with. Here, we'll do that on this because I already got some white over here. You love the details? I do too. This is my favorite part. Anytime I'm painting, the details start coming together. That's my favorite part. So I'm just lightening up a little bit of that sable brown to make it tan. I don't even know if I needed to do the dark, darker color, but I wanted to do this to kind of add like a little squiggly like highlight on those or something. I don't know. I might also do like a little little swipe along the bottom. That kind of accents those a little bit. Okay. I think we are almost done with this. Let me check my picture. This is the original example. Um, it looks like it has some pen line art. And so we may do that too because I really like using those really extra fine paint pens. I got these um, from Artistro. They are linked in my Amazon favorites. They are the extra fine tip paint pens. There are 30 colors in this box. I use the black and the white the most, of course, but every now and then you will find me using other colors. I'm going to pull it out, get a little scrap piece of paper, make sure it's working well, kind of get it primed and pumped, shake it up if you need to. Sometimes I take it against the table and get rough with it. Make sure it's all shaken up. <sighs> Somebody said, I think that tip's one of my favorite tips so far. A little bit of color and a little bit of another color to add some texture. Yeah, it's a very subtle thing. Oh, also, we need to make sure this is 100% dry before we start using this, these pens on there or they will uh, get paint, paint gunked up in them. So, uh, while I'm doing this, I want to remind you that in 20 minutes, we're sending you an email. If you have signed up for Clubhouse uh, anytime in the last six years or today, and we're going to send you an email with a link to an after hour Zoom call that's happening in 35 minutes at 8 p.m. Central. You can come and join us in Zoom, ask your questions. We can bring you up on camera if you wish, or we can just hear your voice like a radio show. Um, Lauren Martin will be on there with me. We're going to be talking about going from a beginner painter to an advanced painter. And so if you feel like you're stuck in that beginner's phase and you don't know how to get out or you're just starting out in the clubhouse and you just want to make sure you're getting started off on the right foot, um, or if you just want to connect with us and come say hi, come join us for that Zoom call. 
Okay, we're going to add some little details with these extra fine paint pens. Getting it pumped up nice and good here on my little. So see how tiny these are? I like using these. You can probably barely even see that. I like using these um, on smaller projects. Like this is only like an 11 inch blank, so it's definitely smaller. I like using them on this because I feel like it's more delicate. Um, whereas sometimes if you use like a big five millimeter paint pen, it can be overpowering because the lines are too thick. But this feels more like cutesy doodling that you would do in your notebook. Let me show you up close. You see that? Little cutesy doodles. So I'm just kind of going along each of these little detail lines. You do have to be a little careful with these because um, if you kind of go against the grain, it can cause the little delicate tips on these to splatter a bit and that can be kind of aggravating. And sometimes when I'm doing these little doodles, I'll also add a in like a little squiggle or a little like, like uh, two little lines or something. This is not the smoothest little wood round from the Dollar Tree either. It's, it's a little bit on the coarse side. So I feel like this pen is not wanting to play nice with it. But like, oh, I forgot this little leaf here. We can add little squiggles or little, see what I did there? Like little details, just the tiniest of little details that kind of add something, just a little bit of doodle-esque sort of feel. I like that. Now let's do the bottom of our umbrella. This is what I was talking about, about hiding those graphite lines. We're going over them with these little fine paint pens, so nobody's even going to know that you could still see the graphite lines. Matter of fact, it's kind of a blessing that I can still see them, because then I can see the shape that I'm drawing. Definitely doing a little squiggle jiggle right in there. That's a little personality. And then we can take a a white one and add a little highlight. Oh, I just now saw all the comments. Sorry, I was getting all carried away over here. Uh, can you remind us how to do the clear coat when using paint pens? Um, very carefully or spray it. Spray it is the safest option. I do have a new video over on my YouTube channel all about this that y'all can go watch afterwards. Um, but essentially, and I do show you on the video exactly how to do this. Essentially, when you're putting a clear coat on something, you're kind of just going in short little strokes across it. With You don't want to do like this or it will reactivate those paint pen lines. You kind of just want to do, try not to go over the same area more than once. So don't get too much sealer on your brush. You kind of have to like balance it out because if you don't have enough, you definitely have to go over it more than once. But if you have too much, then you can make a mess of it. All right, I did not get this shaken up good enough. Lauren says, practice, practice, practice. Once you find the brush you like, you'll use it every time. Okay, getting this paint pen all primed up, trying to get the paint going in it. I'm kind of pouncing it up and down on my little sticky pad here and squiggling. With the white paint pens, sometimes it takes a little while to really get them going because as they dry, it almost looks clear. Like it looks white when it first comes out. Like I'm doing CPR on a paint pen. Can you spray then brush? Yes, you can. And that's probably also the safest way. All right, I think we finally got it then. So now we can do some little highlights with these. I'm just going to do some little swipes on these, on the petals and things. A little bit on our umbrella. just to busy it up a little bit more and add a little bit of light. Where do you get this umbrella template? Uh, it's linked up in the video description. It's called Umbrella Blooms. You can download it and tr tr trace it on a canvas, trace it on a wood round like I'm doing. Um, you could even cut it out as a door hanger. The door hanger would be shaped like this. I'm gonna be painting this one tomorrow night. Uh, we're gonna change up the colors and stuff, so come back and join us. That'll be happening at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. Um, what other questions do you guys have? I've got a few minutes before I've got to hop off and get ready for that Zoom call. I need to clean up my desk a little bit, so let's chat while I tidy up. 
<laughs> Tammy says, I'm on Facebook. Is there another place to watch? Yeah, uh, I'm over her here, over her, over, <laughs> did you hear my accent come out? I'm over here on YouTube. So go to YouTube, type in Southern Adornments Decor. I'll pop her right up. How do you teach, do you teach how to use a jigsaw? Yes, we have a tutorial inside the Painters Clubhouse. There's also one over on YouTube that we uploaded recently if you want to go check it out. Um, but we have more tutorials inside the clubhouse about that. And even ones that talk about using like a scroll saw and a router and things like that. Uh, Lauren even did a little tutorial for us on how to do, um, I just realized I probably should have taken a picture of all these colors before I put them up. So our clubhouse members know what colors I used. Let me get carried away with myself. I'll leave those out. I'll clean that up later. Um, Lauren even did a tutorial for us showing us how to do, um, you cut circles with a circle, cannot talk tonight, circle cutting jig that she got at Lowe's. I think it was Lowe's or Amazon. On the template, aren't there two leaves below the mint flower? That's likely. I don't, maybe I didn't trace those. Where's my template at? My template walked away. Or I just set it down somewhere and cannot find it. Here, I'll just do this. Yep, we missed two whole little leaves that go right here. That's okay. <laughs> uh, you switched to YouTube and now you can see all the comments that you couldn't before. Yeah, we're over here having a party. You just didn't find us. It's okay. This is where we'll be tomorrow night as well. So just, you know, subscribe to this page and it will email you when I'm live and stuff like that. Plus, if you want to get text notifications when I go live, um, I even sent the text list a, a, um, a link straight to that my pink channel so they knew where I was. Oh, your YouTube's under your business name. Who is this? <laughs> do I know who this is? I always don't know people by their business names as well. We do have a couple of Canadians. We don't have very many. Um, do you know Leanne Labuke? I don't even know if I'm saying her name right. Um, she paints door hangers. She's from Can Canada. She was in our clubhouse several years ago. Um, Oh, Alana. Okay. Or Alana, Elena. I'm not sure how you say it, but um, I didn't realize it was you. But yeah, Leanne is from Can uh, Can Every time I try to say it, I want to say Canada. <laughs> because Canadian sounds different than Canada. It's like different enunciation. I'm losing my mind, y'all. Uh, Sheila said, I have to finish my truck so my husband could take pictures before he went to bed. <laughs> okay. Um have Razzleberry instead of magenta. Would that work? Okay. Let's look at my color chart. Um, Razzleberry. I love that name, by the way. Razzleberry. It is right here. This is Razzleberry. This is magenta. So Razzleberry is much more red. So if you use Razzleberry, I would not use dragon fruit for your pink, probably. Because this is dragon fruit and this is Razzleberry. There's not enough of a contrast. So if you're going to use Razzleberry, I would maybe use like carousel pink or something like that as your contrasting pink color. Just make sure that the two pinks kind of like look or like the pink and the purple like look good together. Kind of like, let you know, do a little swatch if you need to on a piece of paper with all your colors laid out. That'll let you know if it's going to turn out well. Uh, Teresa, that color chart came from my friend Sandy McTeer, Sandy McTeer Designs. Um, she works for DecoArt. I, she hasn't updated it yet with the 2024 colors, um, but when she does, I'll be letting y'all know. Okay, y'all, I'm going to let you go. If you want to join the clubhouse, you've still got 10 minutes to sign up to hop on that Zoom call with me at 8 p.m. I'll be on there in 25 minutes with you guys. Um, we're going to be talking about moving from beginner to advanced painters, so come and join us over there. You can sign up now at paintersclubhouse.com. Um, yeah, I think that's all the things. I'll see you again tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. Central. We're going to put names on the wall for all of our new members. At noon, we're going to interview another clubhouse member. And at 7 p.m. Central, we're going to paint this design again, but in a door hanger. This was just a little 12-inch piece from the Dollar Tree. We traced our template on. It's a great way to get started painting um, because, you know, it's very low cost. This was a buck twenty-five. Used to be cheaper than that. <laughs> Not that I'm hostile about it or like holding a grudge against the Dollar Tree for going up a quarter. Everything's gone up. <laughs> All right, y'all. Y'all have a great evening and I'll see you guys next time.